Hi guys, my name is Kevin Tomberg. If this is your first time in my channel, uh, this is like part seven, I think, of uh, the restoration of my southbound lathe, 1935. Look at that good looking bed there. Uh, this time we're gonna go through all the way from the ugly, ugly mess that it was to begin with to its beautiful, shining glory that it is now. But before we can see all that, there's a lot of paint that's gotta dry. So let's get started. Got this up on saw horses. These saw horses are rated for 2,600 pounds per pair. I put it outside because I just got a tremendous amount of dust everywhere in the shop when I did my paint removal before. So late in the game, I figured out I'm gonna put it outside, shut the garage door, and keep all the dust outside. Well, I got one side done. I'm very glad I did that outside. I'd hoped a bunch of that was gonna chip off, but very little did. It was thick, made tons of dust that went everywhere. I've got this fan down here that I've kind of at least blow it along rather than in my face. It helped a little bit. Rainy day today. Glad I got this plastic on here. The lathe bed is underneath an overhang, so I don't just have it sitting out in the rain. That was brutal. It's a pretty good casting I and mean, there's roughness. I was careful not to wire wheel any of the machine that scraped surfaces. Especially inside was the hard part. I am dirty, dirty, dirty. I'm gonna try to sneak in the house and get washed up. Good morning. I'm gonna work on getting my lathe bed back inside the garage. It's been somewhat rainy, I'd like to get it out of the moisture. And uh, we've got all of the paint taken off, so I'm not so worried about the dust. I'm gonna be putting some Bondo on. I'm gonna try um, seeing if I can put it in multiple thin layers so I don't have so much to sand off. So let's get going on that. I realize there's a couple pockets there and under each of the cross pieces that's not open to the top so I didn't get it cleaned up before so I'm gonna just do a little bit um, it's like no end of getting the grease out but I'd probably hit it with some great cleaner solvent maybe some foaming engine degreaser and just see if I get enough that I'm gonna be able to maybe slop some black paint up in there I have these work gloves to try to keep my hands from being quite so filthy but it doesn't take long that they always just blow out so I don't know, sometimes I think they're not worth it. I'm gonna see if I can smooth up just a few rough spots on the surface of this lathe bed before I start putting on some Bondo just to take out a few rough spots. Before I put the Bondo on, I'll do a final wipe with acetone. I really actually hate doing this. My local Lowe's and it's like $22 a gallon. I like watching Keith Rutger's channel, vintagemachinery.com. And he was recently talking about how much he disliked putting on Bondo. And he said, sometimes you just have to suffer and take the good with the bad. And that's the way I feel about Bondo. Um, never goes on smoothly. And I feel like if only I could dedicate five years of my life to doing it every day, I might finally get good at it. This is the filler that I'm using. I put, I think, one or two capfuls of acetone into that much on the bottom and mix it up. It seems to flow a little bit smoother. I saw some people online saying don't do it. Other people say to do it. It flows easier. I don't know what the right thing is. Um, just start learning as I go. All right, my goal this time is to try to put on a thin layer. Which again, seems to be very hard to do. That's kind of how I have it look.
think that looks good. Um, when I put some primer on it, I'll probably end up paint, uh, sanding that just a little bit as well. You know, the places where the metal comes through, I could theoretically bring the whole Bondo level up until I cover it, but I think that the primer will go over that okay and fill in. Right on these edges here, it's a little bit rough. I'm not sure whether how the primer is going to do. I may end up having to sand that. And it's been my luck that I apply and sand and apply and sand repeatedly. I will be surprised if I don't have to do it on here. I think that looks good. You can see the brush marks. Got that flipped on its face. Uh, as I was painting, some of the Bondo right here where it had been very thin kind of lifted off the metal. So I just kind of put on some extra thick paint. I'm gonna try to see if I can sand that flat or whether I'm gonna have to go back, put more Bondo in it and all that. I hope I don't have to do that. All right, right now I've got some black. I'm just gonna put some black gloss on the inside parts. I'm not gonna try to smooth them out. I'm just gonna leave that as a rough, unfinished surface. That black in there looks good. I think that's gonna look very nice. I got the inner part all painted black. Had to be careful not to get it on the machine surfaces. Got this last side to do. Okay, so we're making progress. All right, it's, I know most of this has been cosmetic. Later I'm gonna talk about the uh, ways themselves. I just mixed up a whole bunch of Bondo, came along, tried applying it along here, and then smoothing it, and some of the places it would smooth, and other places it just tore it off, and it just kind of peeled off. I wish I was better at this. It's very frustrating. I, I went back and I pulled all the Bondo off and cleaned it before it could harden. And then I looked and there was still some of that old gunk on there still. So I wire wheeled it more, you know, wiped it, cleaned it. You know, then I come back and look and it still looks like there's some here. Okay, so I went over again with the wire wheel. Even with that wire wheel, you can still see a little bit in there. This stuff's tenacious. I wiped it all down with acetone and try the Bondo again. I decided what I really wanted was something that I could like paint on that would just flow in, but then harden up. Thought about putting this epoxy resin in, which I've done before, but it's pretty sticky and more like honey and doesn't flow very well. So decided I'm gonna try using acetone to, to thin it to the point of where it's runny. So that's kind of the way it is right now. Now I'm gonna put in my hardener. <laughs> using this throwaway 60 cent paintbrush. This is the uh, first coat that I did, which is a little bit better. I'm gonna try to see if I can come back and fill that in more. All right, I think I better stop. I like using this plate. The surface of it cleans up really well. It's got some rigidity. I can hold it. Done pretty well. Looks like I had one bubble there. I'm gonna have to come back and fill that. I can feel it's just a little bit soft, so it needs more time for curing. Off camera, I put another coat of white on here. Got a little defect there. I'm gonna decide what I wanna do about that. As is tradition, I decided to do some more sanding. That place I pointed out, that ridge, I tried sanding it and at least got a little bit smooth, but I thought it's gonna uh, still show up again when I painted it. So I got some thinned down Bondo and I put it on here. Probably most of that will sand back off. Uh, we'll see. Have I mentioned how much I love Bondo? So I put it on here and I'm trying to smooth it out 
but in order for it to be smooth, it, it turns out to be thin, and when then it's thin, it's just flakes. So either that means that somehow my underlying metal has got something on it so it won't stick to it, or I'm just getting it too thin, and I need to somehow build up the whole area to be thicker. And if I do that, then it seems like I have to do it consistently along the whole way. I don't like Bondo. I just, I'll just tell you, I don't. I took some more Bondo, put like two or three capfuls of acetone in, and made it just runny soupy. And then I put it in here so it would flow. And then I'm spreading it a little bit with this foam brush. But you can see that I've messed with it a little bit too long and then it gets to a place like that and it just gets tacky and then it pulls off. And I'll try to fix that, but I bet I'll make it worse. All right, back over here at the Waze. Come back and sanded it. And I think it's reasonably smooth. So I'm gonna come back and put another enamel coat on it as a primer. All right, I put a coat of the gray color. I decided to do that because I had some extra. I'll put on multiple coats of this. I'll come back and sand a little bit. I've, I, since I had to turn it up, I see you got a little bit of dripping there. I'll, I'll sand that down. Coming along, slowly but surely. As is apparently my tradition, I take paint that is reasonably well covering and I sand it and I cause all sorts of problems. Um, actually, there were some ripples here. You know, I had painted this and then turned it upright or it had been upright and so the paint was kind of running down towards the bottom and there were some ripples there that I didn't like. So I've, even though you can still kind of see, uh, I think that's where the paint was thicker and somehow it just, it sanded different, but I can't really feel that. Um, this morning and had some sleety rain coming down in the shop. I'm working on the other side of this bed. I uh, sanded down some of the ripples. It's always interesting to me when you have like low spots like that. I don't know if that's a combination of the metal or just the paint didn't go on evenly. And then certainly here, the high spot, still kind of see some ripple lines there. You know, I've sanded pretty good, I think. The paint was thicker there, and maybe it's not completely cured, and so it's not sanding as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and paint over it. I'm gonna leave this again down on its side. Uh, the other side uh, has dried up well enough that I could tip it over, and then we'll have this side, and then hopefully I won't get that running uh, effect. There, I've got a coat on it. I can still see some irregularities. I'll be sanding this layer as well and probably put on a final layer and then we'll put a clear coat on top of that. I will clean up some of these paint streaks. I'll use a, uh, a sharp edge and just kind of gently scrape that off. I'm gonna need to wait several days for that to dry. It's cool. I've got a little heater running, but it's not really enough to, um, you know, cook it very quickly. So I'm gonna give this several days to dry. I got down the primer and one coat, maybe two coats, I can't remember. And again, I was seeing ripples, so started hitting the top of it with the sander. And of course, the sander then um, scuffs up the high points, making the low points more visible. I would like to try to see if I can get some of these ripples at least smoothed out, if not completely flat. As I've been doing the sanding here, I'm finding that the, the enamel paint went on fairly thick. And then I think when the top sealed over, the uh, bottom had not fully cured, even though I've had it sitting here for four or five days. As I'm sanding, it's kind of gotten gummy and um, doesn't sand, it just kind of gums up. It's been several days since I sanded this and those areas that were gummy before feel dried now. So I'm gonna come back and hit this again with the sander and try to smooth out those rough areas. Well, those rough areas smoothed out pretty good. 
Um, I'm happy with that. But as I was taking out a couple little ripples I could see in here, I got into some other areas that I think are still wet because that's kind of gummy there. So I'm gonna, and then a little bit up in here. So with it being winter time and it not being super warm out here, I think it just didn't have a chance to dry between layers. Those uh, soft spots did dry up overnight. I was able to sand them, but then as I sanded, I got into a couple more soft spots. I've got a heat gun here that really just down to one small area um, right there. Got some more paint on here. This time I propped up the, uh, the ways so that that area that I painted was level. So I don't, I think there'll be less uh, rundown ripples. That looks good. All right, here I've got it sanded. Just about ready for the coat of paint. And maybe that'll be my last coat of paint. We'll see. But I got that nice and smooth this time. Well, the paint is all on. It's nice and smooth, and that feels good. I would love to put the clear coat on now, but I've had enough bad experiences with that causing wrinkle when the paint's not 100% cured. So I'm gonna give it uh, maybe till next week. I don't know why finishing the lathe bed seems so special. I, I guess it's because the, well, it's one of the fundamental parts of the lathe. Anyway. We've got it all clean, we've got it painted, and we're getting ready to put the uh, clear coat on. So uh, this is kind of an exciting time for me. But you're not quite looking down on those traveling lights. I had best be on my way. All right, I've got a coat of clear coat on here. And I'm on my way. It's looking good. I did notice one little wrinkle that may just have to be at the hidden beauty mark because I don't think you'll be able to see it. Just got on a second coat of clear coat. I put on a second coat of black enamel in the interior. Here we are a couple of days later. This has had a couple of days to dry. It's nice and smooth. Got that clear coat on it. Got that second coat of black enamel in there. So I'm going to now get it flipped over and work on the other side. I'm trying not to scuff the undersurface, so I'm using these, um, they're camping mats, actually just kind of a thin foam. Um, if you look here, there's some, some marks of where it was on the other side, even though I tried to put a little bit of barrier. I see that when I did the black, I had a few little things that came here. Looks like I need to do a little bit of repair before I can finish this side. I was able to very lightly sand and get that black pigment off. It really didn't take much. And then just very lightly touched up with a very small paintbrush and then I hit it with a heat gun. Then came back and put a coat of clear coat on and did not get any wrinkling. So that's uh, not sure quite why, but I kind of thought I would, but I'm happy. So. Got that on there. Maybe tomorrow I can get uh, another coat on. I've got a second coat of clear coat on here. When I mixed it up, I had some extra, so I put a little bit on the inside there. All right, so let's talk finally about the surface of these ways. Here we have the original scraping marks. Future Kevin here. As I was editing, I realized I hadn't really explained for the casual viewer why all this issue about scraping and stuff is so important. It's a couple different factors. Number one, you would think that metal, if you have two flat surfaces, they would just slide on each other. But in fact, if it's very flat, it actually can do what's called stick slip, where the metal does not slide smoothly. So there needs to be a little bit of oil in there. Now, if you have just two very flat surfaces, the oil is just gonna kind of run out or get pushed out, or it's not gonna be evenly spread. So the old time machine makers would put little tiny, uh, what we call scraping marks. It was just enough to hold just a little bit of oil and then that would let those surfaces slide. So that when we talk about scraping, there's two things that are done for scraping. Number one, you can scrape to make sure any high points are taken off. That'll be scraping for flatness. 
and then there's scraping for oil retention, and sometimes I think that's called flaking, unless I have my terminology wrong. The second issue is, why do I want to figure out the wear on this lathe, and how will that affect the performance? There is a part that goes on here called the carriage, and it goes back and forth on these ways, and you tighten up all of the tolerances and so that it doesn't wiggle, and you do that on the place that's not worn. Then if you travel to the worn area, if there's a lot of slop, it's going to affect the quality of your part, I mean the quality of your cut, and just your overall performance of the lathe. Now, on this particular bed, I think it's going to be okay, but if it was excessively worn, then that could lead to problems with it just not cutting smoothly. Here we have the original scraping marks. Here they're lost. Lost through here, through here, starting to pick them back up again, and then back to probably half depth, and then back up to full depth here. What I am gonna try is to use um, this level. Now, I know that this is not a machinist level. I did take it to a big surface plate and check it for flatness, and I'll show those videos, but it looks like at most, um, it's like a thousandth to a thousandth and a half um, of gap between whatever points it is that it's touching at and the high points. So I'm hoping to be able to at least to get it within a thousandths or so, but if it was say five thousandths down, then I think I, I could detect that with this setup. All right, let me set up here and I'll show you. Okay, so we've got it flipped over and I'm trying to do some assessment. Ultimately, I don't have the equipment. If I wanted to scrape this in, I don't have access to a reference plate that's this big, or and I don't have access to a, you know, a six foot um, camelback straight edge. I mean, I could buy one, but it's probably gonna cost more than the lathe did. When I compared this to the reference surface, if I think that that bow was like one thousand or one and a half on this, and then I can get two here, you know, I think at most we're, we're talking about two thousands where I, I think that's probably going to be enough for me. You know, I would love for it to be sent off and ground and all that, but if, if anyone has any suggestions to put in the comments, whether I should scrape for oil retention here, it seems a little dishonest because you put the scraping and it kind of indicates that, oh yeah, this is, you know, a, a flat surface, but in fact it's down, you know, a thousandths or two. So those are my thoughts. If you have any, any input on that, I'd love to hear it. But otherwise, ta-da! <laughs> I'm calling this done. Next step will be to put this on the pedestal and the legs and get the three back together. And then I feel like from there I can start building the parts back onto it. Excited that this is all uh, done and I think it looks good. You know, okay guys, thanks for watching. That was uh, a lot of work getting that all uh, straightened out. It was terrible when it started. I think it looks really good now. Had quite a bit of footage to pare down for this video. Hope it all made sense. Thanks for watching.